Good morning, everybody, from afternoon, evening, wherever you may find yourself. Welcome to Studio on 7, and I'm going to be sharing some watercolor info today. Um, looking at our color wheel and complementary colors. So, if you look at the color wheel, very handy little piece of equipment for those who are not familiar with colors or haven't done a mixing color mixing course. Um, if you look at at uh, let's do let's do red orange. The complementary of color of the red orange is going to be a blue green. So now, when you want to make a shadow on a building, on a rock, whatever you may be doing, you look at the complementary color and mix that in, in a small percentage with your color that's the main color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with this color over here which is the, probably the closest to yellow ochre that you can get and then the complementary of that would be a blue excuse me a blue violet so I want to do a little bit of a rock and then I'll show you how to do two ways how to do uh, a shadow in that rock and excuse the shadows and things for now uh, busy sorting out or getting the right shadow, uh, the right lighting for the studio, so uh, the right angles, etc. So these things happen. Uh, so I'm going to start with some yellow ochre and just make a bit of a sphere with using the yellow ochre. Now, using the yellow ochre already, you can notice that some of it is darker. So, what you can do is you can lift out color by adding water. And then just each time, using a towel, so your brush remains wet, but you're just lifting out some color. And in that way, you can get a light source and the dark side to this. Now, that is probably the darkest that we can go with the yellow ochre. Uh, unless you add a bit more to it, but it doesn't go much darker than what we have on this piece already. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, that is one way of doing a, a rock or a shape or whatever subject you're painting. That is one way of getting the dark in. Another way to get the dark in, and I'll do another one next to it. So that's just using uh, paint and then um, lifting out with water. So I'm going to do same color again and next to it a pretty dark color because I've, I haven't used a lot of water on this. So now I want to lift out again, just get some water on the brush, get it cleaner and lift out again to give us that same feel. Okay, so now we've got two shades here. Now I want to go slightly darker. So I'm going to take some yellow ochre, put it down there, clean off my brush. Now I've got a violet, very bluey type purple. And I'm going to use a little bit of that to go into the yellow ochre. get some water onto this brush again 
Oh, the joys of humidity. As hot as anything. So, just get some of that. And mix it into that yellow. And I don't know if you can see it, but it goes a darker color. So now, I can lay in darker shadow area. Using a complementary color. Let's get some more. Let's get that brush a bit drier. Uh, yeah, you really need to wait for it to dry. A bit um, it's still a bit wet but you will see that there is a now a much darker shadow I have three varying shades so we've got the light one used with lifting out we got the straight yellow ochre in the center and then adding the complementary color to the yellow which is uh, a purple violet or blue violet added to that and we're getting this darker yellow shade so that is going to give us a uh, two ways in which you can do shadow uh, if I had to do it using gray it can tend to be quite a mess so let's just have a look at at what happens when you do gray. So let's just get this paper a bit wetter. Let's just get that in. And we'll do the same kind of shape again. And just remove, lift out that color there. Tissue paper always handy. Lift out that color and then just dark it, strengthen up this side over here with the yellow ochre, or in my case, uh, I think this is yellow oxide. Somehow we don't get yellow ochre here. Well, not readily available, let's put it that way. So, right, and we just lay in. more of that okay now if I take yellow ochre and add uh, I'm just going to check which one it is yeah add this this is Payne's gray to the yellow ochre if you have to compare the two it's going to be like really really dark and not much yellow showing through and you're going to get a gray color into that instead of the yellow color that's giving a yellowy dark yellow shadow this is giving more a gray shadow which is not really what you want um, it's not giving a it's not giving that lovely yellowy brown color it's giving more the gray uh, if we take some of the gray and we put it there it's giving you more that kind of yellow unfortunately it doesn't work for the specific thing it's now not a varied uh, hue that's going across the rock in terms of shading if you look at the three this one a definite no no yellow ochre on its own you'll see that the shadow is not as pronounced as when using the complementary color so let's have a look at something else let's um let's have a look at let's use a red so i've got a red on my palette and we'll go with the red 
very humid here at the moment. I'm going to go with a red. And uh, let's do let's do maybe a, a pyramid of sorts or something. Now the complementary color of this that we're looking at is green. So. We have two ways of doing green. Green out of the tube or mix your own green. Okay, and this green is very green. So now I want to lift out one side. So let's lift out one side of this. Try and get it. To give us a, a need. Yeah, there we go. Much better. So this could be a mountain, very triangular mountain. And we're lifting this color out with a slightly wet brush, but drying it every time. Now, we're going to use green, and the green that they have is these different values of green. So I'm going to go with a darker green. I'm going to mix up some red. This is cad red, so stand under correction. And I don't particularly like this green, but for this purpose, I'm going to use this green here because that's one of the darker greens that we got. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a touch of green to that. And if you can see properly on the camera, you'll notice that it goes like a dirty, dirty brown color. So I'm going to, it's it's a ready, ready, darkish red color. So I'm going to add that in. So we're maintaining the red, but it's going darker. And this is more a, hmm, kind of like a, almost a claret color that it's, that it's giving me. So, maybe we just put some a dash down here to emphasize that line. Okay. And there we go, a little bit of a, so that's the color that you're getting there on the bottom. That's the dark color. So let's put that in as a maybe as the shadow. So maintaining the red, yet getting and maybe put a crack or something into that. Maintaining the red, but giving you the different values. So, complementary colors, very handy. Um, you can see as this dries that it gets really, really a beautiful color and variation across um, the face of this rock. This one's still good. Maybe with a little bit more sunlight from the top, really. This one more from an angle. This one, too dark. On, on this side. So that might be in a small spot that you have something that dark coming in um, between two rocks where there's actual shadow. Um, you might put something like that just on the edge of that. Here using uh, I think it's a CAD red that I've got. Uh, let me just have a look at that. 
sorry, my mistake. A lizard in crimson hue that I've got there. That one I think is Rose Meadow. Yeah, that one over there is Rose Meadow, which is a very dark, dark color. Uh, anyway, hope that's a good tip. Um, using complementary colors, something that I've been working on in improving my studies in watercolor. Uh, hopefully that can help you too. Um, from me, Cappy, have a great day. Cheers.